Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to a short tour of the Detroit Institute of Arts. Here's a picture of the front uh, front of the building uh, that faces Woodward Avenue, and as you can, and Detroit Institute of Arts is one, as an old art museum, over a hundred years old, and is as you knew from the video, it's one of the best art museums in the United States. It's truly something that everybody in the Detroit area should be really, really proud of, and we're so lucky that we get to go see it. Here's a first one of the first things you'll notice in front of the uh, art museum. It's a statue by Rodin. It's very famous, and it's called The Thinker. And as you look at the statue, you can kind of tell why, because it looks like he's thinking. And notice how skillfully the sculptor made his muscles on his body look. It just looks like a real person. Very, very skillful. This is a picture of the thinker with uh, in, in, in front of the Detroit Institute of Arts. It's right in front, out in front. But that's a sculptor, sculpture. When you walk inside uh, the, the museum, one of the first things you'll see in the Great Hall is all of the old armor that knights wore. And that's real. And it's that old, just hundreds of years old. Really interesting to look at. After you walk through the uh, Great H Hall, you'll come to the uh, Rivera Court, which is where uh, the court area where the uh, Diego Rivera painted his uh, famous murals about Detroit. And you can see here there in the picture, museum goers are looking around. All four sides have interesting, interesting pictures to, to look at. It's a mural. That means it's painted right on the wall. And there's like a sunroof up above, so it's always really, really light. You can see it really, really easily. Very interesting. Now I'm going to show you some of the things. Uh, Detroit Institute of Arts is a huge art museum. You could spend, as, as the video told you, you could spend days and still not see everything. But there are some, some of the more famous paintings and sculptures that, that uh, are sort of like must-sees. So I'm going to show you those so that you'll know what to look for when you're walking around the galleries, the little individual rooms that have uh, works of art. Here's um, a sculpture. Of, uh, it's called The Donkey. And uh, the DIA says this is the only piece of art in the DIA that you can, you're allowed to touch. And as you can see, uh, and you'll have a chance to touch it, uh, you can see on his back, where m many people have touched his back, it's basically made the, the sculpture smooth. And that's to show, they, they use this to show visitors that we always think, well, if we just touch it one time, it, we're not going to hurt the piece of art. And that's true. But the problem is when millions of people end up touching a work of art. You can really cause damage to it and make it dirty or ruin it. You can see here that the little donkey's back has been rubbed smooth by all the people touching it. So that's a good example of what happens when lots of people touch the art. So this is the only thing you're allowed to touch. Otherwise, please don't touch. Just enjoy with your eyes. Lots of the uh, works of paintings that you'll see in the museum are what they call still life. It's They're not paintings of people, but they're paintings of objects. And it, it's interesting to look at them because they're so lifelike. They almost look like photographs. Uh, here's a still life of beautiful flowers. Watch for this one. Here's another still life of uh, just kitchen items on a table. And notice how the artist uses that light. He can paint that light to make it look like a sunshine shining on it. Here's a creepy still life. This is a scary still life. You can see there's a skull and a flower and a globe. Just very, very spooky and eerie. Watch out for this one. Uh, this is a st uh, painting. Uh, it's called Three Oranges. <laughs> very obviously it is. It's in the modern art section of the museum. These are like newer paintings. They're not hundreds of years old. They're just in the last, maybe the last 50, 60 years. Also in the modern art section is, this isn't a painting, but it's glass sculpture by the famous uh, sculptor uh, Dale Chihuly. I love his stuff. It's really interesting, the glass, it blown glass sculpture. Also in the modern art section, you can see this stairway. It's called a, a, a stones on the on the floor. Watch for that. 
And this is one of the more famous pieces in the modern art section. This is a replica, not real, but a replica of camel bones. The, the artist who did this was really fascinated by camels. And so she arranges the camel leg replica bones to look like a forest. Picasso was a very famous uh, artist, and his paintings look a lot, a lot of them look a lot like this, sort of like squares and circles and cubes and very colorful. This is one of the Picasso paintings that the DIA owns, and it's priceless, very, very valuable. Another picture that was featured um, is by Degas. He was very famous. He always painted ballerinas, and this is a very beautiful picture of uh, girls getting ready before they dance, a ballerina dance. This is a more modern picture of uh, dancing. And the thing to do here is when you look at these paintings, don't just look at one look at one picture or one part of the picture, but try to look at all of it. Lots of times the artists will hide details in the paintings that you can see things that maybe a person who just looked at it quickly would miss. This is probably the most, one of the most famous and most valuable paintings that the, uh, the DIA owns. It's by Van Gogh, a very, very famous artist. It's called The Postman, very famous. And here's a self-portrait of Van Gogh, the artist. Uh, he painted himself, that's what he looked like. He lived several hundred years ago. I mean, these are paintings that they suggest you look at because they tell interesting stories. Watch for the details. This is one that's just very interesting. Watch for this one. What's going on here? I like this one. I want to see this one. It's a, a, a barnyard scene. And instead of people, there's animals. What's going on here? Here's another picture that tells a story. Look at the details closely when you see this picture and see if you can figure out what's going on. This is a very famous painting as well, these two lovely little girls. And it's just beautiful. And I'm sure when you see it in real life, you'll, in close up, you'll be also impressed. This is one of the creepy uh, paintings that they talk about. It's about the shark that uh, you can see at the bottom. There's a shark and he's trying to eat that guy in the water. And actually this really did happen and the guy did survive, but he lost his foot. This is a, a, a what they call a death mask. It's what they, uh, the, uh, the artist made a, a clay, uh, a replica of an actual uh, person's face after he had died, and then he made a replica of that. It's not the real person, but it's called a death mask. Kind of creepy. One of the creepier things in the museum. This is a beautiful, colorful painting that uh, if you, it's interesting because the longer you look at it, the more you see in it. When you'll see this at the DIA, take your time looking at it because it'll change as you look at it. The people at the DIA keep telling you to take your time when you look at paintings because they really do change for you. Here's an example of a performance art. It was a video that students thought was really interesting and they watched it for a long time. This is a, a painting that uh, students uh, looked at with a uh, guide from the DIA and they analyzed all of the different uh, details in it. And then after they looked at the painting, in groups they made their own kind of art construction using some materials that the DIA guide provided. And you'll do something similar to this when you visit. Thanks for watching.